And we are live. What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel, proudly sponsored by Empire Fight Store. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your thoughts down below, and if you are new, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I wanted to do a quick reaction video today. I've done a lot of videos this week already, talking about AJ vs. Franklin in my preview and prediction. Go and check that out. I've also done a preview and prediction for Rabasi Ramirez taking on Isaac Dogbo for the vacant WBO Featherweight World Championship. Go check that out. And I also did a video yesterday where I spoke about the ludicrous revised fight between Chris Eubank Jr. and Conor Ben. I titled it Idiots Abroad, so that already gives you a little insight into my thoughts on the matchup and my thoughts on the promoters and the fighters. So go check out that video as well. It's done quite good numbers in the uh, the first 24 hours, so please go check that out. But wanted to do a quick reaction video to the news that we got yesterday. And to be honest, the cat was already out of the bag. It was one of the worst kept secrets in boxing. We knew that Devin Haney would take on Vasily Lomachenko. We just wanted the official announcement, and we've now got it. May 20th in Las Vegas, Haney will put his undisputed lightweight crown on the line against the three-weight world champion and the best amateur boxer of all time, in my opinion, Vasily Lomachenko. So thoughts on this fight? I just want to say on the card, it does look like there'll be a strong undercard, but I don't understand the decision from top rank in ESPN to put Junto Nakatani on the non-pay-per-view portion of the card. For those that don't know, Jinto Nakatani is one of the best up-and-coming fighters in world boxing. He was the WBO flyweight world champion. He's moving up to super flyweight. Kazuto Ioka, who's a Hall of Famer and held that WBO title at super flyweight, vacated it rather than face Nakatani because he doesn't fancy that matchup one bit. Nakatani's tall, he's rangy, he reminds me of a, a super flyweight version of Josh Taylor, you know, very good on the inside despite being tall and rangy. And he's moving up and challenging uh, Andrew Maloney, as we know, shared that rivalry on top rank in ESPN with uh, Joshua Franco, who's currently a world champion as well with super flyweight. So Maloney's a recognisable name. Nakatani is one of the best up-and-coming fighters in the sport. He started to align himself with ESPN. You know, he fought on ESPN when he beat Ankel Acosta. I feel like there's a real opportunity there in a world title fight, a 12-rounder, to stick on the pay-per-view portion. And they haven't done it, which feels really strange to me. And I'm disappointed for Junto that he's not going to get more exposure. But hey, going over to America and fighting for a world title is still a big deal for a lot of Japanese fighters. So happy for Junto, but don't understand that decision. Moving on to the main event. I mean, May 20th is just going to be pretty special if you're a fight fan. I think uh, put your phone on, do not disturb and don't let anyone contact you. And don't leave the sofa that weekend starting from Saturday evening. Because we're going to have uh, Taylor versus Cameron over in Ireland, which I think is an incredible fight. I think the undercard's very strong for that as well which is surprising not seeing that on a lot of matchroom shows recently then rolling into the early hours we obviously get this card and Haney versus Loma at the end of it I think it's really exciting in terms of the matchup itself a lot of people have reached out to me and said who have you got to win I put on my Instagram story a poll to say who thinks Lomachenko is going to win because I see most people picking Haney, so I am interested to see who still believes in Loma who thinks he can pull it off because just a couple of years ago you would never have this many people, regardless of who was in the opposite corner, picking against Vasily Lomachenko. It's one of the best fighters we've ever seen, one of the most technically gifted fighters we've ever seen, one of the best pressure fighters we've ever seen. As I mentioned, I think he's the greatest amateur boxer of all time. Won gold at every major tournament, only ever lost one fight and went on to avenge it. Uh, basically 400 amateur fights, 397 to be exact. He was just an incredible amateur. The competition he faced throughout his tenure as well, just an incredible amateur career. So I think he's the greatest amateur boxer of all time, or if you don't want to go that far, he's at least the greatest amateur boxer of his generation and the generation that's come after him as well. So he's an incredible fighter, obviously a freeweight world champion, done it in such a short space of time. But whilst he is amazing and he is so gifted and I luckily and count myself fortunate to have seen uh, Vasily Lomachenko live when he took on Luke Campbell at the O2 Arena and I'd still regard him along with Dimitri Bivon Canelo Alvarez as the best fighters I've had the privilege of watching live. Whilst he is incredible at lightweight, he does give away some of his talent just purely on size and athleticism. Now, it hasn't hindered him too much, I don't think but we're starting to see more signs of it in recent years. We saw against Teofimo Lopez that he was just too reluctant to pull the trigger for seven rounds because he was too worried about Tio's explosion, Tio's unpredictability off the back foot and the way he can explode with counter shots. And he was a little bit worried by that. And the bigger, more athletic guy in Teofimo Lopez didn't actually need to do a lot. A lot of people said he outboxed Loma. He didn't really. He just put the feelers out there and Loma was too scared to engage. 
So Tio dominated the first seven rounds of the fight. Loma dominated the last portion of the fight. I think he lost the final round as well, but I think you can also give him one round earlier potentially. But he came on strong later in the fight, but he left it too late. Against Jermaine Ortiz, it was following a very similar pattern where the much bigger, more athletic guy was getting the better of him and Lomachenko couldn't quite find a way around it. And whilst his angles and his footwork are amazing, he doesn't quite have the same foot speed or the, the same sort of quick in and out movements and the unpredictability to make his opponent miss and get in. Eventually, he rescued it back and just about took home the points decision, but it was incredibly close. And I just think with the aging and the size difference at lightweight, I don't like when people say he's not a natural lightweight. I understand that and I completely get what you mean. He's more natural at 126 and 130. I understand that. But to say he's not a lightweight just isn't true anymore. He's been at lightweight for a number of years now, spent loads of years at lightweight. He's wanted to become undisputed at lightweight. He was close to doing so um, when he fought Tiafimo Lopez. So there's so much that he's done and a body of work at lightweight now that means he is officially a lightweight so we can't keep using that excuse i get that naturally he's more of a featherweight and a super feather but if he wanted to be there he would be there and he kept moving up because he needed a bit of stiffer competition but he's starting to give away the size now we're starting to see that become more of a factor as he slows down and he's not quite as athletic anymore so i don't like his chances against devin haney because i think devin is so quick does have the size advantage, has a tremendous jab, and that's the key for me. I think Ortiz was able to keep him off with his speed and his boxing skills. I think Tio was able to keep him off with the speed and the power and the threat of the power. I think Devin is a better boxer than Tio. I think he's a better boxer than Jermaine Ortiz. I don't think he packs the same punch as either of those two, but I think he can keep you off and he can keep you tentative. And I think ultimately he'll build up a lead and I think Loma will find it really difficult to close that gap consistently and quickly enough. And I think it might be the type of Loma fight where the first two minutes of a round he gets dominated, maybe comes on strong for the final minute of the round, but doesn't quite do enough in Las Vegas to unseat Devin Haney. As the fight goes on, we see him grow into the Tiafimo Lopez fight. We saw him grow into the Jermaine Ortiz fight. I don't think Devin Haney will dominate this fight 12-0 or 11-1 or 10-2. I do think Lomachenko will come into it at some point because he's just far too good not to. And, you know, Jojo Diaz, I know Devin Haney's improved since then, but Jojo Diaz, we saw what a small, crafty southpaw can do on the inside against Devin. You can disrupt him and make him uncomfortable. And I think Diaz probably took two or three rounds from Devin Haney. I ultimately think Lomachenko can do exactly the same. And I think any version of Lomachenko, even if he is washed, is better than that version of Jojo Diaz. So I do think Loma will pose him some problems. But as we've seen, he gives away a lot of rounds now to try and feel his way in. But previously, I think he used to start quite quickly. I think back to that Luke Campbell fight where he came out so sharp early on and set the tone nice and early. Don't think we really see that anymore, especially against big athletic lightweights. So I think Loma's really going to struggle. But if there's a guy that is capable of doing it, it is Loma. He's got the ability. He's got sensational talent and technically maybe even better than Devin Haney. But Haney's got the athleticism, the size, youth on his side and confidence as well now. I feel like Linares, Diaz, whilst they were great performances, there were rocky moments in it because I didn't think Devin was fully confident quite yet. But going over to Australia, how he handled that situation, nearly fighting without his dad there, that ended up changing last minute. But I think he handled the occasion really well. The rematch, he looked like he was the home fighter. He was that confident and relaxed. And I now think Devin's in his bag and he's very confident. And I think he'll go into this fight very confident of getting the victory. And I think we'll see that in his performance. So I am favouring Devin Haney. But as I mentioned, Vasily Lomachenko is so great and so good that he could make this very difficult for Devin. And Devin can be disrupted and troubled when he does get in uncomfortable situations on the inside, as we saw against Linares and against Diaz. So can Loma do that? And if Loma does do it, I mean, it's one of the best victories probably of all time, in all honesty, especially in the modern era, because where we're at right now, Haney would enter as a big favourite. Loma is undersized. And I think it would be a tremendous victory if he did pull it off. And it would be the final thing that Loma wants to achieve and the final thing that Loma needs to achieve. You know, Loma's unified belts. He's won in three divisions. The only thing left now is undisputed. So it would be a massive thing for his legacy and just kind of cements his greatness. So it'd be a big win for Loma. For Devin Haney, I mean, it just continues to cement himself as a pound-for-pounder. 
You know, there's a lot of talk about whether he should be in the top 10 or not. If he goes and beats Loma, I think there's, it's very difficult to keep him out at that point. And he remains the number one lightweight in the world in a division that has Shakur and Tank Davis. Now, you may pick Tank Davis and Shakur to both beat Devin. I probably do as well. But really and truly, until one of them goes and beats him, he's the man at lightweight. I do think after the Loma fight, because he is struggling to make 135, he'll move up to 140 and clear the way for Shakur to pick up some of those belts and top rank maybe look at a Loma-Shakur fight down the line. But I do think Devin Haney is going to win this fight. That's my gut feel right now. That may change by the time I do my prediction. We'll wait and see. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Really keen to understand what you think of the fight. Are you happy with the fight? And what do you think will happen in the fight? Let me know. Make sure to subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you next time.